And you know, I was broke grinding, bro. I'm coming in the club, ten, fifteen dollars, ten dollars to sign up, five dollars maybe for like a beer or something. I don't know, whatever, you know. I'm performing for the bar, the bartender who breaking down and, and, and the dude sweeping up the club. But I just always felt like, bro, you you ain't meant to be average. Just something always in me, bro. You ain't meant to be average. Nigga, you know? so I get out there, bro. I, I get out there and, and get my hands dirty. Bro, what you hate a thing? I'm laughing to the bank. Pull up on blowing stank. Then hand in my favorite drink. Ask about me, my name got rank. I did what they said I can. I had to defy the odds. Shout out my family, we the shot. My name is Windsor Jones. I'm from Atlanta, born and raised. Windsor Jones is an overall grinder, hard worker, success story. You know, um, I'm an artist. Um, I'm the brand ambassador for one of the biggest law firms in the southeastern region. Um, and I'm just overall entrepreneur, man. Somebody that got out of the mud. Music always been my passion from the beginning. When I was young, um, like 10, 11, I was in a church, singing in the choir, gospel rap, all that. But I always been an overall hustler. Um, I dedicate that to my mom. My mom owned a couple businesses, bakeries, restaurants, you know, so I know the struggle from a different standpoint. Like my mom really struggled and hustled to make everything happen, but one thing she never, she never did was she never stopped. So that's why I got this such a relentless grind. And everybody asked me like, bro, you always working. Why you don't never, you know, you the hardest worker I know. I credit that all to her, you know? My mama Sonya Jones, shout out to her. Um, I really had to rebrand and like, really hit this grind hard to make it happen. So I was hitting the scene, I had a scene called What's Going On, produced by Marvelous J. I was everywhere, open mic, in the club, I was there. And you know, I was broke grinding, bro. I'm coming in the club, 10, 15 dollars, 10 dollars to sign up, 5 dollars maybe for like a beer or something, I don't know, whatever, you know? But I was out there, man. I might, it might be 30 acts on the, on the table, man. And, I'm number 29, you know what I'm saying? I'm performing for the bar, the bartender who breaking down and, and, and the dude sweeping up the club. But I ain't never stopped, bro. You know, so I pushed, I was that way tragic up until about 2012. And then um, I switched my name to my government, Winston Jones. I went through another rebranding phase, you know, phase of my life. And uh, since then, the only way been up, bro. My manager, Nico, that passed away, he put me on the grind too. He, uh, he came in the house one day and he threw a bag of bootleg CDs on the table. Like, go sell these, bring me back this much, you keep this, and then we're gonna do it again. Then eventually, I was killing the school so much with him that I, I was I was going down to the Africans buying my own packs, you know what I'm saying? Then I expanded from that to uh, DVDs, to watches, to everything. Bro. So I was in school, had my books in my hand, and my book bag was full of, uh, Merchandise, you know what I mean? So, it was like maybe 2012 when I first switched to Windsor Jones. I had a night shift job at uh, CVS, right Aid, Rite Aid. And uh, that was crazy, bro, working at night shift. Cause it's like, my eating, it was 11 to seven. So my eating habits was off my everything, you know? But, and I ain't had no whip, man. So I was walking there. I had an apartment not too far, but I was walking there, bro. Walking there at home, man. Just grinding, bro. You know, just trying to keep it going. But one thing that never stopped was I was doing this music. And then in the midst of all that, my mom put me on the film industry that was kind of brewing up in the city. So I joined the movie union. It was more behind the scenes working with the crew, you know, so a um, lottery ticket was my first movie. I was 21. Uh, craft services is like, you know, we dealing with the food, not necessarily catering, but we dealing with the snacks throughout all the day. The extras, we gonna set up the extra food and all that. So it, it started off real slow, real slow, but I was always a hustler. And I, anything I do, I'm gonna put my best foot forward. I ain't gonna do it at all. So I was out there grinding, going in. And um, a few years in, I was working on Let's Be Cops, moving with Damon uh, Wayans Jr. And a guy named Jason, he was a prop master. He saw me hustling and was like, who was that guy? You know, so I want to bring him on board. So next thing I know, I went from doing crafty to working props, which people don't know props is everything the actor touch. So if, if this was a movie right now, they would have gotten this hookah from props. You know, um, they get the phone from props, you know. So I was doing that, man. And then that's, you know, the pay increase and, and, and props kind of came with a little more prestige, you know. So doing that, one thing never stopped was the music. And the people don't know the film industry, but you work, the standard is 12 hours, 12 hours shift. Sometimes you do 15, you know, sometimes you do 16. So imagine going in six in the morning and you might get off 10, 30, 11 at night and you still hit an open mic, you know, and, and wake right back up. And you gotta be there at six in the morning again. And, and one thing about it, scenes are different so you might be shooting 10 minutes up the way today then it might be a scene that they shooting somewhere that's an hour away tomorrow 
but it's still the same call time or still so you know, it was just like, bro, and I did this for years, bro, years, you know, for years, man, just to the point where people start following me on, you know, social media, and they'll, um, they be like, bro, you you went out last night and did a show? Like, bro, I went home, went straight to sleep, bro, but it was just that drive in me, bro, that I just had to keep, you know, I had to make a way, you know? One of the big blessings that came was I was working crowd service on the movies, Neighbor 2, with Seth Rogen and Zach Efron in about 2016, and the prop master, the same one who, put me on game Shout with Let's Be Cop years before with the prop master on that. She came in one day like, hey, Wednesday, they, they need seven rappers for a scene. I told them you rap. And so next thing I know, I had to do a lot of audition tape, and they picked me to be one of the rappers in the scene. Um, it's like we had to rap Kanye West. Uh, we, so we did that, we like at a tailgate scene. Uh, we did that, and they filmed us for about three, four hours. And ultimately, the scene ended up getting chopped up so much that you really don't see me like that. If you watch the trailer, you can see me, but the movie, it goes so quick. But because they used our voice, it made me sag up, which means I still get checked, you know, every quarter for that to this day amongst everything else I got going on. So that was a huge blessing right there, you know what I mean? Man, I always just felt like, I just felt like I was gonna be great or whatever I do, bro. Like, I just always felt like, bro, you, you ain't meant to be average. Just something always in me, bro, you ain't meant to be average, you know? So, I get out there, bro. I, I get out there and, and get my hands dirty, you know what I mean? To, to accomplish the task at hand. I had no problem with that, so that's why I, you, I gotta have people around me that are equal-minded. It, it got to a point where I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta pull, I'm getting old, I ain't, I ain't an 18, 19 year old college dude no more, I'm late 20s, I'm like, man, I gotta pull a move, bro, I gotta, I gotta do something, man, how can I get on this radio every day? And that's when I ultimately, I was like, man, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this jingle. Run down the street, Jay, doing your thing. Please, God. You feel good, Jay, facing me. When the cars swerve up by they lane. That shit bang and let that play for a minute. That's a drop. One eight hundred four one one pain. Hey. Four one one pain. Hey, call one eight hundred for one one pain. I drop my top on the coop. You already know how I'm coming through. I'm feeling good, brand new. Pardon me while I flex on you. When another driver in my lane, hit my car, driving me right. I be calling for one one pain. To the bank, I'ma be laughing. Yeah. I still go with that one, bro. Like. I, would, uh, I hit the studio, my cousin Steve O's studio on the east side, Columbia Drive, and I sat there and I just listened to 4 one Pain Jingles, all the ones they had for like an hour straight. And that's when I was like, man, these folks got country jingles, EDM jingles, like any genre you would think of, they had. And at the point in time, Pastor Troy had a jingle with him. So I ended up coming up with uh, the Money Rain jingle, produced by Reuben Swag, uh, my bro. Um, submitted it to him by way of my partner Khalil. And maybe a few weeks later, he like, bro, they 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 feeling this jingle, bro. You know what I'm saying? They might uh they might do something with it. So a couple more weeks passed, and he like, bro, they want it. So he kind of broke with the deal for me on it. And then they they sent the contract. It was for seven states. So not only was the jingle finna play in Georgia, it was gonna be in seven states immediately. It was like Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida, Mississippi. New Orleans. It was like it was like seven states. So I'm like, okay, not only have I pulled a move to get my voice on the radio in Georgia, I just pulled the move for seven states, like like that, you know. So it was like cool. So they flew up here January 2017 to re-record, and it started playing February 2017. And the jingle just kind of just kind of took off. Like everybody was just like, bro, who is this with this jingle? Like sound like a real song. Like this is crazy. Cause you know before me, jingles were like synonymous with being cheesy. And I ain't want to do nothing. I, if I put my name on it, my foot on my stamp on it, it gotta represent me. I ain't want to be like, well, you know, I had to do this for them, but this what? Well, I wanted to be like, yeah, that's me. But I couldn't say my name. I didn't say my name in it. So 
Now I'm still doing open mic, still doing shows, but now what I'm doing is I came up with this idea like, bro, I should do the jingle at my show because everybody know it. And a couple people around me were like, bro, doing a jingle? I don't know, bro. That's kind of, we knew we knew it could be borderline genius or, or borderline cheesy as hell. But I'm like, I'm going to do it, bro, because everybody knows it. So if I, if I do this first and people be like, oh, that's, bro, I love that jingle, then they'll pay attention to my real song. So I do the jingle first, because it was only 60 seconds. So I do the jingle first, and I do my song next. And I mean, I mean I'm all around the city, bro. Places you aren't orthodox places. Doing the, doing the money rain, full and pain jingle. But, and the reception was crazy. Like, people like, that's you. I love that jingle. My kids love that jingle. Blah, 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 blah. So full and pain, they caught wind of what I was, a lot of officers of Canada Penelope. They caught wind of what I was doing. Because they like, man, who is this person out here pushing? Nobody's ever took, did a jingle for us and then went out here and pushed it. But really, I, I was pushing myself and letting them know it was me. But I was pushing their brand about to fall as well. So um, I think maybe like May 2017, Eric Penelope flew up here. He had a meeting with me, like a five-star restaurant in Buckhead. And the first thing he said was like, bro, thank you for what you did for my company. And um, like, tell me more about yourself. So we talked, we built, got to know each other. That was like May. It went real good. And I never forget, I went to the restroom. And the Eric Penelope followed behind me and handed me an envelope. And was like, hey, man, you know, thank you. This is just another token. I appreciate more this comes from. So like, after the meeting, I opened it up with Khalil. It was a whole nother check equal to what he paid me for the jingle. So I'm like, man, okay, it's all right here. So then it come like um, October, next thing I know, they, they gave me an Escalade, a 2017 brand new Escalade, wrapped with my face, full my pain in 2017. Like, it was unreal, bro. Like, brand new Escalade, bro. At this point, I'm working at Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry Studios. Um, and they, asked, they flew me down to Florida and asked me what to take to quit my day job because they just saw what I was doing, what I was bringing to the table. Um, we worked out a situation. I stopped at Tyler Perry on a Friday, and I started with them on a Monday, like being their official brand ambassador. So I do the jingles. Now, the jingles what got me in the door, but the hustle mentality and the hustle limit is, is I do more for them now. I set up events, I run the events, I run the concerts. I mean, at this point, man, I performed in front of 20,000 people six, seven times now, bro. Like, it's crazy, you know. Um, I went from being the last performer in the open mics you know, to now performing at arenas, bro. Tycoon Fest just passed. I'm the only artist, to perform, independent artist, to perform twice. I'm talking, you talking 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar, Chris Brown. Um, I have a commercial on TV, daytime TV, one of the hottest commercials uh, to one of my jingles. I've had over 40, 50 billboards, phone paint billboards. Like, bro, it's really been a blessing, but it was really me kicking that door down, you know, and, and my whole grind prepared me to be able to see the opportunity in this. Talking about nights like this, it's back in that pack in, get your high like this, yeah. And I'm fly like this, her sauce dog got flavor, bitch, wanna try like this, yeah. All of my niggas, we win it, all of my bitches, they win it, all of my diamonds, they glisten. Y'all nigga play with them digits, y'all nigga coming to miss. We don't see no competition.